Hello everyone, dear friends, my name is Nicole. Today I would like to talk to you about the following topic. Where do all our problems come from? And to share some nuances. How else consciousness comes in and how it can catch us, based on my own experience. And recently I have noticed that there is a moment when you know everything, you understand, you observe your consciousness, you see how it comes in. You understand that the key basic moment is always to be in feelings, and you act like that. But there is a moment that, despite all this understanding, we continue to listen to our consciousness. And we continue to listen to it under the pretext that, allegedly, there are basically two pretexts in my head, as I've understood. The first is, well, I do study consciousness, the system. Well, you can keep talking, it does not concern me. I'm in feelings, in love. I'm not interested in all this, but you can keep talking. What else will you tell me? I'm not falling for this, I'm not falling for that. But at the same time, you still listen to it. And the second moment, you seem to understand that while you're in this life, in three-dimensionality, with consciousness, it will never shut up. It's such an excusable moment that it's talking in your head and it's normal because it will never shut up. And you let it talk in your head, you keep listening to it. And, you know, it's like a ball of scales of your attention spilling over. You start to hear it louder and louder. You keep listening, you allow it, and you start to take interest in what exactly it tells you. And this moment when the scales, the scales of your attention are slightly tipped in favor of consciousness, you listen to it so much that you start to waste your attention on it. So, when it gets saturated, it is getting to the most convenient position for it. When circumstances are formed in a certain way, it tells you something. A certain person also says something. All this forms a certain picture. And precisely at the best moment, when it still has power, it hits you on your most sore spot. On what is the dearest and most important for you. As I said before, it always hits on what is important to you. And it hits you with your own strength, which you gave it, because you listened to it. You didn't seem to get involved in all these games, you didn't think, but you listened to what it was telling. And that's the hook, that we let it talk in our heads instead of just thinking about what we need and using it as a tool, and that we close our eyes to the chatter, and the fact that we sometimes listen to it is such a tricky moment, no matter how much it seems to us that we already understand everything, we are on a roll. That's exactly the moment when you are weakening, when you think you have everything under control, but you have everything under control. And you think that nothing can scare you anymore, and there is no way it can approach you, and at that very moment when you've got relaxed, it just comes up and hits you on your sore spot. And Igor Mihalovich mentioned many times that consciousness is like a wild beast, meaning it waits for the moment when you slightly lose or weaken control, and it immediately bites and hits you. Therefore, you should keep consciousness on a leash and control it despite everything. Even if you have the following experience, like it happened to me, you're a little bit distracted. You think, you're so cool, everything is good, there are constant feelings and all. You are a little bit distracted from this control and training of consciousness, and it results in a moment when it has attacked you and has eaten a part of your attention. This experience is good by its existence, and you also understand how it works and that you should never weaken control and your position. And distribution of attention. You should control every second where your attention goes. When you listen to the chatter in your head, or when you generate inner feelings to the fullest. As Igor Mihalovich said in one of the videos, you feel that the fire started to burn low, so throw up the firewood, and that's it, everything is simple. Therefore, it is necessary to determine whose side are you on on the side of light or darkness? Do you live to consume and exploit and be exploited? Or do you live to become equal among equals? 
Do you live to be temporary or to become eternal? Do you live to disappoint the hopes or to live up to them? The hopes of those who gave you life. Who are you? A true one or a traitor? It's up to you to decide, my friend. But if we do not keep this bonfire burning, it will go out. And we feed it with our attention like a bonfire is fed with firewood. In order for it not to go out, you need to constantly put firewood in this hearth. I mean, if we switch our attention to earthly affairs, it will go out. It's like, you know, let's say, we made a fire in the hearth, turned around and left the room, then we came and everything burned down. And then we are like, oh my, we need to make the fire again. Of course, it is necessary to constantly put firewood, then it is burning, and you need to constantly rejoice and feel this warmth. But when we feel that the warmth from the hearth is decreased, we can turn away and do our tasks. But we feel that the warmth has subsided, that means we need to put some more firewood, that is, redirect our attention to our hearth. Right? Right. It's very simple. I also notice such a point where all our problems come from, from selfishness. If we look at it superficially, we all know what selfishness is. It's I, me, mine. In other words, better things for me, more stuff for me, for me. Somebody looked at me wrong, I was not given enough, but I want, or something else. And this is what lies on the surface, which everyone surely understands and everyone can trace it within themselves. But as understood, what lies deeper behind selfishness is that selfishness is a separation of oneself from a part of the whole. And if you look at our world, we have such a system of development that is oriented at division in everything. Especially now, if you look at our modern generation, before there used to be some order, people created families, while now it is such a personal free flight. Everyone values and considers it cool to live in complete freedom of their internal self-development with the benefits and under conditions that are best only for oneself, without even sharing them with someone else. And all the problems come from this. But there is a moment when you understand that the essence and meaning of the spiritual path is just to give up selfishness with its set of features and characteristics from consciousness, to give up this fake tinsel around you in order to truly become part of the whole, to merge with the One. When you understand this, you just want to really get rid of all the manifestations of selfishness in you. In the books by Anastasia Novich, it was said that part is exactly a part because it repeats the features of the whole in its individuality. And you understand that internally we're all the same, we're all one. Eternally, we all have one aspiration towards life, one aspiration to learn more and more about love and to pour out more and more in its versatility. This is our inner need. It is the same for everyone. It is very similar. Internally, we're all one. While the external division, someone says this way, another one says it differently. Someone is more intelligent. Someone is more cheerful. I mean, all these external characteristics are the characteristics of consciousness. We define personalities by kind of different manifestations of external qualities. But inside, we're all one, indeed. The essence is that, as Igor Mikhailovich said in one of the programs, it's not what society can do for me, but what I can do for society. In the same way, I truly want it the way, not what people can do for me, but what I can do for people because you understand that you want this full commitment so that there would not be a drop of the selfishness left, so that there would be a true merging with the One, when there is nothing left that separates you from the One. It is essential to understand this at some point and to do everything that contributes to it and to unite not because it is necessary, but because 
you realize that this is our true essence and that all of us will understand this sooner or later and to act in this way. You can do a lot of things, join projects, join business. Even if you do some ordinary things together, when you do something for someone and someone does something for you, it somehow unites and complements. And in this process, you start to know your true self and you really want to be a part of the whole because it's so amazing. This is your natural need, it's just that you haven't thought about it before and didn't understand it at this level. And when there is such a harmonious process of interaction, there is no such thing that, for example, some part in the process does more or better. And you think, this is how cool I would like to be too. There is no such thing. After all, he or she does it for us and you do it for us. And everything that's done is done for us. You are not doing it for yourself in order to get a mark or to be praised. So you don't need this. This is not the point. The point is in more commitment. The more you can give yourself to everyone, the more satisfied you become. This is the process of interaction no gradation of who is better, who is worse. There is a moment that everyone compliments each other and there is such a funny thing. It's a common process complimenting each other and it's very interesting. Spiritual path of knowing. At some point it seems to you that you have already understood something and that you are very interested, you want to go further, and then a little bit opens up to you and it seems to you, wow, how interesting. And you understand every time that with every moment, more and more will be revealed to you. And you have no idea what insights and understandings you'll get in the future. And where you stand now, it's so little. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of your path. And at this stage you realize that the most important thing is to remove all your selfishness, some selfish thoughts and the like, in order to truly merge with the One and become part of the Whole. And this is the inner thirst and inner desire. At some point it seems that there are some obstacles, something complicated. It's difficult for us to deal with our consciousness and so on. But this is the path, this is experience. Without overcoming all this, there would be no understanding how valuable it is when it happens. When you get everything for free, you don't appreciate it so much. And when you don't step over your own selfishness, when you don't fight it, you don't understand that you really want to give it up in order to be to be just part of the whole. Thank you all, dear friends. From the book Isosmos by Anastasia Novich. Good thoughts, combined with strong eagerness, are forerunners for good deeds. Good deeds are the essence of maturing souls. Courage evokes the power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit binds into unity. Unity decouples the power. The unified Spirit changes the cycle. The general outcome depends on everyone's efforts. Everyone's efforts depend on the change of internal frequency. The frequency is a leap of a moment leading out of the pole boundaries.